so uh, Nia. Why are you clapping? Okay. <laughs> Near-death experience is a phenomenon by which we hear that uh, the memories of previous births are awakened and uh, people gain extrasensory perceptions. As a person, uh, since you have undergone a near-death experience, can you please… When did I die? <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, we read that you, a snake bit you and you had… Uh, oh, that was not near-death. <laughs> so, okay, then can you share what near-death experience is to us? and how it awakens consciousness within us. If you have… Uh, anybody from Varanasi here? Oh, only one. There is something called as Bhairavi Yatana. Have you heard about this? This is when a person… Are you ready for something like this? This is a management school, I thought. Hello? Are you all interested in this question? Only the older people are raising their hands because they are near death one way or the other <laughs> Because uh, why I'm asking this question whether we should speak about it or not is, aspects like this about our life need to be properly looked at. If we… if I try to give you a two-minute answer, it'll become frivolous and you'll make wrong conclusions. Either you will believe it or disbelieve it, that's no good. But it's in the intrinsic nature of the way life is built. See, I'm sorry, I'm not getting your name. Srinidhi, sir. Srinidhi. Lot of wealth <laughs> out of the three qualities. What are you? Viran, eh? Swaminathan, sir. Okay. <laughs> No, I thought those three qualities you got here, I was wondering <laughs> See, you are the person that you are. You are different from this person. What is it? What is the difference? What is it that makes the difference? The kind of experiences that I have had… Memory, essentially memory, right? So your memory is your person. Your memory is not just what you remember consciously. Do you remember how your great-great-great-great-grandmother looked like? No, but her nose is sitting on your face. Yes or no? Your body remembers or no? Your body remembers how your forefathers looked a million years ago. So there is genetic memory, there is evolutionary memory, there is elemental memory, there is atomic memory, and there is karmic memory and there is articulate and inarticulate memories. Like this, there are many levels of memory. In yoga, we identify eight forms of memory. These… all these memories put together, you are the person that you are. All of them are interplaying with each other. You may not be conscious what is kicking in. Right now, at this stage in your life, it may so happen, I'm not saying essentially for you, but for anybody, you are eighteen. You look at your mother or father and say, no, I'm never going to be like that, all right? But you become forty-five, you will see, you will walk like your mother, you will sit like your mother, you will talk like your mother. This happens to any number of people, ask the older lot. Because the genetic memory is overpowering your conscious memory. Unless you have consciously done something to yourself, you will see the genetic memory and the karmic memory will overpower everything that you are doing consciously unless you have created a certain level of awareness within you that you have distanced yourself from your genetics. In this culture, there are processes, if somebody dies, we are doing various karmas, he's from Varanasi. Kriyas and karmas are being done every year, first eleven days and then every year, this is not in memory of them, this is to distance yourself from their memory. We are trying to keep a genetic distance from their memory because if you allow their memory to function within you, you will not have a life of your own. Unknowingly, your mother, your grandmother, your father, your grandfather, all of them will start living through you. If you want to be a fresh life, you must distance yourself 
When they're alive, we love them, we respect them, everything fine. The moment they're dead, we want to distance ourselves from them. This is a very conscious culture, but unfortunately people think yearly once they're overeating, thinking, they're doing this in memory of their father. No, this entire process was created to create a distance from the dead. Someone else somewhere far away said, two thousand years ago, when he said, come follow me, when people said, my father… if somebody said, my father is dead, he said, leave the dead to the dead. It looks most uncompassionate statement, but he is saying something very profound when he says, leave the dead to the dead. If you don't leave the dead dead, they will live through you. This is the nature of life. So only a human being is able to leave the dead to the dead. For all other creatures, anyway it will play through them. Even in the human being, if they're not conscious, it will play through them. So this phenomenal amount of memory, which is incredible levels of memory because, see, if you… what do you like, mango or banana? Mango. Mango. If you eat a mango, it goes inside and becomes a woman. If he eats a mango, it goes inside, becomes a man. If a cow eats a mango, it goes inside and becomes a cow. Very smart mango, you think? No, there is memory here. Whatever enters this body, it is… make sure it becomes masculine. There is memory here which makes it… See, just because you started eating not mangoes from Tamil Nadu, you started eating mangoes from Uttar Pradesh, your nose will not grow, your complexion will not change, it will not happen. It doesn't matter what is the intake, there is absolute memory within you which determines how it should be transformed. So this memory is a possibility, it makes you who you are. At the same time, memory is also a boundary. It will not let you cross that. See, I remember this much means, what does it mean? I am living within that memory boundary, isn't it? So your genetic memory, your evolutionary memory and every other kind of memory, especially the karmic memory, is a possibility which allows you to do many things unthinking. If you… you know, many things you can do. You know how to eat rasam rice, unthinking, isn't it? You ask… Uh, here there are some Chinese, Li is sitting here, you ask her to eat rasam rice, whatever she does, it will spill all over the place, it will not go into her mouth. Because there is memory, simply you can eat like that. But somebody else tries such a simple act, it won't work. She will eat with two sticks, you try, it will go and hit the ceiling. Because all this memory is built in, I am not only talking about memory that you built by practice, there is memory which is beyond practice, like you will walk in a certain way without knowing why. If we look at you, you're walking half a mile away, if we look at the way you swing your hand, we know it's you. There are 7.3 billion people, but you have a unique way of swinging your arm, isn't it? So the memory is built into you, it is both a possibility and a limitation. This is the entire goal of yoga, to go in the direction where you touch an intelligence within you, which is beyond memory, because beyond memory means beyond boundaries also. How do you know somebody here, this is your friend and this is somebody that you do not know, that is your enemy, that is a person you like and that's a person you don't like, how do you know? Just your memory, isn't it? So all your boundaries are drawn by your memory. So boundary… the memory is both a possibility and a limitation. So when the moment of leaving this body comes, don't believe all this, okay? You must experience it. When the moment of leaving this body comes, the memory goes into an overdrive. It is not about past lives or whatever, this is called as Bhairavi Yatana. To conduct this consciously, that's why people who are on the who are near death or people who are become old enough and they think they must die at some point and they know they will die, they all move to Kashi at one time because they want to conduct this Bhairavi Yatana consciously so that this… they can become free from this memory. If you become free from his memory, memory means repetitiveness. If you become free from your memory, all repetitiveness is gone. From compulsiveness to consciousness, you have moved. 
So this is being interpreted in the West in so many crazy ways. Generally these books are written, everybody is claiming they had near death because those books sell well. In America, if you want to become a millionaire, you just have to say, I almost died. And I floated and they see angels, this is all cultural nonsense. You will see Shiva Parvati floating, they will see angels, this is all cultural stuff. But memory will go on overdrive for sure for everybody. 